Good afternoon, everybody. This is Pastor Mark here from Congregational Bible Church. I decided to make a video uh, to be able to keep in contact with everybody. And it's always good to see faces and things like that. But this is the first uh, inaugural video of the Congregational Bible Church YouTube uh, channel. I wish it was under different circumstances, but this is how we're going to have to do this. So. I really think it's important for us to keep contact with one another, so we want to do these videos and we'll probably be releasing more and more as the days and weeks go by. You know, uh, if you go out there in Bakersfield or in Shafter, you may see that a lot of things are closed, but one thing that is not closed is communication. Uh, communication is still up and running in all areas. And so uh, we want to use these mediums of online videos and things like that to be able to keep in contact with one another. Uh, we encourage you to call us, text us, uh, Skype with us, whatever it is. Uh, we'd love to see our church family and we want to keep in contact with you all. I want to share a truth from scripture as we begin this video. It's Psalm 46, 1 and 2. It says, God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble. Therefore we, therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Even if the earth should change, we will not fear. That's our message, and that's what we want to stay focused on, is that God is our help and a refuge in a time of trouble. I want to give you some updates of how things are going at Congregational Bible Church. As you know, or as most of you know, all of our services have been suspended, postponed, canceled. Uh, whether it's a home Bible study, whether it's a Sunday morning service, Wednesday night dinner, all events have been canceled. This is at the suggestion of the President of the United States and the CDC. No gatherings of more than 10 people, and we want to honor that. This is going to be in effect for at least two weeks through March 22nd, that Sunday, and through March 29th, another Sunday. If things change after that, we will reevaluate and we will reschedule. But as of right now, through those two weeks, everything is canceled. I ask you to consider it like a snow day. There are some churches that have to close and, and can't do services when there's extreme weather, maybe snow, maybe a tornado, something like that. Just think of this as a prolonged snow day. Hopefully it's only a couple weeks, but we really don't know. Uh, we're going to try to keep putting out videos on our church YouTube channel, so subscribe to it, and hopefully we'll put out enough interesting material uh, to keep you uh, entertained uh, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, we really want to encourage you to follow the guidelines that are put out by the president and by the CDC, the social distancing requirements. Um, take that seriously. Uh, if that's what they're asking us to do, then we should comply. If everybody cooperates, then it really works. But if some people do it and some people don't, then it's really not going to work. So we encourage you to follow those guidelines. I'll tell you a funny story that kind of illustrates that truth of how everybody has to cooperate. Years ago, when I was in high school, I drove into the parking lot of our high school one morning and the security guard was waiting at the gate and he told us to park our car and head to the baseball fields because someone had called in a bomb threat to the high school. Now, smart aleck me, I said, well, what if they planted the bomb on the football field? Uh, he didn't find that funny. Anyways, we parked our cars and we all went to the fields, the baseball, football fields, uh, to stand together. And we were just standing there while the police were searching the school. There were teachers wandering there, just making sure everybody stayed together. But as we noticed, we were near this chain link fence. And on the other side of the chain link fence was the beginning of the parking lot. So we started to conspire and think, you know, if we just hop the fence, we could go to our cars, we could drive away, nobody would ever know, and we could have sort of like a Ferris Bueller day off kind of thing. Well, we decided to, that we were gonna do that. And we were gonna hop over one at a time and we'd meet somewhere outside of school. Well, the first guy to hop over the fence was a friend of mine named Brian. 
and he climbed the chain link fence and he hopped over. As soon as his feet hit the ground on the other side, a teacher walked up. She saw him standing there on the other side of the fence outside of school grounds. But what was crazy was she wasn't mad. She wasn't angry. She just looked at Brian and she said, Brian, you are not helping the situation. We are trying to keep track of all the students here and you leaving the school grounds is making our job more stressful. We all felt so guilty. We were putting more stress on the teachers trying to sneak out. So we all looked at Brian and we said, we're not gonna leave. We're gonna stay here. Poor Brian though was on the outside of the fence asking us, what should I do? Do I climb the fence and get back to school or do I just leave? And so we told him, well, the decision's up to you, but we feel like we have to cooperate. So Brian left the school that day and he had a Ferris Bueller day by himself. Now that story is a true story, but it's silly and it shows though the need for everyone to cooperate in what the guidelines are. Uh, this Sunday, March 22nd and March 29th, I will be opening the Word of God to show our people, uh, to teach our people. Now that might happen through Facebook Live, it might happen through a video like this on YouTube, I'm not exactly sure yet, but we will get that video to you. This Sunday I'll be opening, opening up the Word of God from Matthew 6, where Jesus tells us over and over again to not be worried, to consider the birds and consider the lilies of the field knowing that our Heavenly Father knows that we need all these things. A great passage to look to in a time like this. I'd also encourage you to look into things like Skype or maybe Google Hangouts. If you've never used those things before, maybe look into them a little bit. I think that's another great way that we can have possibly small groups, Bible studies, things like that, is through those online mediums and maybe having a group chat would be a way that we can stay in contact with one another further. You know, we are one church family, we are one body, but we are scattered and we are separated. And so what's the best way for us to really all come together in spirit? And I was thinking through prayer, through prayer. We can still gather together and pray, even though we are separate, we can pray together as a church family in our spirit and in our mind. So what I'm asking the church to do is to gather virtually is what I mean, but to gather at one o'clock as one church family in prayer. And the way that we are gathering is through prayer. And so if everybody remembers every day through however long this lasts, at one o'clock, we will come together in our private place, wherever we are, and we pray, it will be like we are gathered together because all of our hearts and all of our minds are in prayer. Pray for our church, pray for our country, for our leaders, pray for the world. Think of our dear brother, Johnny, who is in Italy right now as a missionary. Pray for him. And you know what? Pray for the Lord to save people through this. Somehow the Lord's going to bring people to himself. And we hope that many people come to Christ through this unique situation. As I end this video, I just want to stress again, we want to serve you and we want to pray for you and we want to talk to you. Myself, Pastor Spencer, our elders and leaders, if you have something you need, please reach out to us. Maybe it's something as simple as supplies. Maybe it's food. Maybe you just need to talk to somebody. We are there for you. We will come and visit you if, if you'd like. Maybe we'll stand on the doorstep, but we will, we will call you if you want. Whatever we can do to serve you, we want to do that. And we want to pray for you as well. So if we can pray for you, call us, text us, let us know how we can serve you and how we can love you. We want to stay together even though we may be separated. So thank you for this time. If you have any questions, Go ahead and call our office, uh, text me, text Pastor Spencer, get a hold of us. We'd love to serve you. Thank you and God bless.